Hey guys, what's up? This is ETSKI Tutorials and this is FPS 1.4. In this episode, we're going to learn how to limit the maximum running speed of our player. Because in our last episode, we learned how to make our player walk and run around. Uh, and we can change how fast our player accelerates, but we didn't change how long the player can accelerate for. So right now, when you hold down forward, you can just keep going faster and faster and faster until not until anything, you just keep on going faster and faster and there's no limit to how long you can accelerate for. And this is really unrealistic because there's a maximum speed when you're running somewhere. So we need to create that maximum speed in code and that's what we're going to do today. Alright, let's go over the variables that we're going to be using inside of player movement script. Alright, so what we're going to be adding is max walk speed and that's a float and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's the maximum walking speed that we're going to apply to the player. And the next variable is horizontal movement, and that's a vector 2. So remember, vector 2 is the same thing as a vector 3, except it only has an x and a y instead of an x and a y and a z. Um, but we're going to make this variable represent the x and the z axis of our player's movement, uh, because we're going along a horizontal plane, because we don't really care about the up and down movement, so we can go ahead and just use a vector 2. And we're just going to have the y represent z for us right now. Um, so the reason why we can't just modify, like, we can't just set the maximum x and z uh, velocity of the rigid body is because, let's say, uh, the x movement and the z mo movement are both equal to the maximum walk speed. Uh, that means it's not going in this direction or going in this direction, it's going in the middle of the two. It's going at a 45 degree angle this way. And if you uh, visualize the vector, it's going to be longer than the max speed if you just know the properties of a triangle, basically. Um, so we need to uh, create a variable to save the horizontal and, or the x and the z movement, so the horizontal movement, we need to save that into a vector 2 so that we can measure the magnitude of the vector and then modify it as needed. Alright, this next line of code is pretty simple. Basically, we're just going to be saving the rigid body, the rigid body velocity x and z axis into horizontal movement because horizontal movement is a vector 2 so that means it can save two floats, an x and a y or in our case an x and a z. Uh, and We're going to be saving rigidbody.velocity.x and rigidbody.velocity.z. So let's just go over that. We got horizontal movement equals and then we have vector 2 and then inside of parentheses we're going to give it two floats and those two floats are going to be rigidbody.velocity.x and rigidbody.velocity.z because we want to save the x and the z movement because the y movement is going up and down and we don't need to limit that for now because that's jumping and falling basically. Alright, now for this line of code we're going to be using an if statement. So basically the condition is if horizontal movement dot magnitude is more than max walk speed. So horizontal uh, horizontal movement dot magnitude. So basically, if you think about it, uh, vector 2 is like a 2D grid, and we have an X and a Z, or an X and a Y, if you want to talk about it like that, but an X and a Z, and then those two points are going to line up another point, so then we're, magnitude is basically measuring that final point that is the result of the two different X and Y, uh, and that's the distance between that and uh, point zero zero. So basically just how big that uh, vector 2 is. So basically if that vector 2 is more than the max walk speed, we're going to execute these two lines of code. And the first line of code is horizontal movement dot normalize. So what uh, that is going to do is it's going to change horizontal movement uh, to a magnitude of 1. So it's still going to keep the same proportion, so it's still going to be going in the same direction, but instead of being 20 or 50 or 1,000, it's going to be 1, but still pointing in the same direction. And then we have horizontal movement times equals max walk speed. So now that we have it set to 1, and you know, any 1 times anything is itself, so we're multiplying by max walk speed so that we are set to the maximum walk speed. So basically just if our movement is going faster than the maximum walk speed, set the maximum walk speed to 1 and then multiply it by the max walk speed so that we are at the max walk speed. And then we can only go down from there. So this is only going to 
limit our speed as far as going above the maximum Mach speed. And basically this entire line of code won't do anything if our speed is a lower than the maximum Mach speed. Alright, so now that we have horizontal movement uh, saved as our actual speed that's going around, and then we have it modified depending on if it is going more than maximum walk speed, let's take the horizontal movement and actually apply it to our rigid body. So our first line of code is rigidbody.velocity.x equals horizontal movement.x. So we found the uh, x movement that we need our player to be moving at, and we just apply it to rigidbody.velocity so that our player is moving at the speed that we want them to. And then we have rigidbody.velocity.z equals horizontal movement.y. Uh, now the reason why we have y set to z is because remember I said in this case we're going to have y represent z because a vector 2 is x and y and not x, y, and z. So if we wanted to in the beginning we could have used a vector 3 and then just set y to 0. But I, in this case, I just thought it would have been easier to just ignore that y and just make a vector 2 and just have the y represent z. Uh, so that's what we have going here. We just have x set to x and then z set to y. Um, so we have horizontal movement calculated and we have it applied to our rigid body. Uh, so all those, what, like six lines of code total is what limits our maximum walk speed and limits how fast our player can walk. So now when we run around, we're going to start running, we're going to start running, and then we're going to reach a speed and stay at that speed. And it's going to be a whole lot more realistic than just accelerating and accelerating and it's just not realistic like that. So this is more realistic and no, it's more realistic. That's what we're going for. Uh, so yeah, now that we have all this uh, code set and explained, let's go over to Unity and uh, check it out on the actual computer. Alright, here we are inside of Unity, and before I actually edit any code, I want to change our level a little bit, because right now we have a problem. Uh, first of all, our level is really, really, really small, so we can't test out maximum walking speed very easily. And second of all, this the floor we have is completely gray, so we're not going to be able to see how fast we're actually moving. So first, let me add a directional light and angle it at the floor just a little bit. That should be good. And now let me import a texture. So import, new asset, and I'm going to just steal one of the desktop backgrounds. Let's go to this. Um, where is the one I want to use? We'll just use this. Alright, and it should import, and there it goes. So now that we have our texture, we need a material, and let's call this stones test floor. Doesn't matter what we call it. And the default is uh, a diffuse shader, so let's go ahead and use that. And let's just drag and drop that right on. And let's set the tiling um, to, I don't know. Let's change that to more like 150. No, wrong one. I'm going to set it to 100. And I'm going to set this one to 150. There we go. That looks kind of cool. We'll at least be able to see how fast we're moving. So let's give that a test run. So as you can see, we can run and run and just keep going faster and faster. And this is not realistic. This is like driving a pod racer or something. So let's create the code that we need to actually limit the maximum walk speed. So let's open up player movement script and let's add the variables that we need. So we need var max oops, walk speed float and let's ballpark that at 20. Uh, now remember we gotta ballpark the variables because I like to ballpark them because if I were to just leave this on its own its default value would be zero, and then the maximum walk speed would be zero, so we just wouldn't move anywhere. So let's start with a number that we know at least will not glitch out. Horizontal movement vector two. All right. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is add a little at hide 
in inspector because we don't need to see that in the inspector we don't that's not a variable we need to edit and let's do our first line of code which was horizontal whoops I put two O's in movement not movement it's movement okay there we go horizontal movement equal vector two rigid actually I don't want to do that because I don't want it to be capitalized rigid body dot velocity dot x and I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste that and Z. So here I go, horizontal movements equals vector to uh, rigid body dot velocity dot x and then rigid body dot velocity dot z. So we gotta put it inside, we gotta put the two numbers that we need inside of vector two, because right now these two numbers on their own are just plain old float variables so we need to put it inside of a parenthesis inside or the, with the header vector2 so that unity knows that we want this to be a vector2 variable and not just two floats because we want them to work together and now we have if or is wait, did I spell it right? yeah horizontal movement dot magnitude is more than max walk speed and it doesn't matter where you put these brackets um, I don't remember if I explained the bracketing system in any of my other videos but just to go over it one more time because I didn't um, if I were to if I just wanted one line of code to be executed uh, if this statement right here is true I could just put my line of code right here and I don't need any brackets but because I'm dealing with uh, two lines of code that I want to be executed if this statement is true I want to put it inside of brackets and I could put these brackets anywhere really like I could put one here and the other one at the end of the line of code honestly I could do that it doesn't matter where I put them as long as I have them so where was I um, the first line of code was horizontal movement dot normalize and horizontal movement times equals max walk speed. So whenever we multiply a vector 2 or a vector 3 by a float, basically what it's going to do is just multiply that float by both the x, y, and z if it's a vector 3. So it just multiplies all the components individually by this float. So, um, and right now we have horizontal movement. We have horizontal movement saved as our rigid body movement. And then we have an if statement to see if horizontal movement is more than the maximum walk speed. And then we set the horizontal movement to the maximum walk speed if so but now we need the horizontal movement to apply to the rigid body so let's do rigid body dot velocity dot x equals horizontal movement dot x and I'm going to copy and paste that because I don't feel like typing it and we want the z to be the y because we have the Y represented as the Z both up here and down here. So let's save that and let's see if it works. I have a compiler error. Um, horizontal movement dot normalize. I must have used that line of code wrong. So let me just uh, edit that and do it horizontal movement dot um, normalized. So the difference between horizontal movement dot normalized and horizontal dot movement dot normalized is when it's capital and it just says normalized, uh, it's supposed to change horizontal movement into the same vector 2 but with the magnitude of 1. 
I don't know why I got an error, but I'm pretty sure this will work because dot normalize doesn't change it. It just returns you what it would be if you did change it. So let's see if it works this time. And it looks to me like we have reached a maximum speed. We're not speeding down this anymore. So it's still kind of like slippery, and we're going to add some code to edit the slipperiness later. But as you can see, I'm not flying across the map at some crazy velocity that is just unrealistic, and I can only accelerate for so long. So let me see if I go down to max walk speed. Let's just set this to, I don't know, 2, just to show you that it really is working. So we're accelerating, accelerating, and we we reach the maximum speed really, really quickly. Now let's see what it looks like if we do, I don't know, 200. It should accelerate for a while, and I don't know if we reach the maximum speed. Maybe. It kind of looks like it. But we're still going really fast because we set it to 200. So let's set it back to 20 because that looked the best. And there you have it. There we have a maximum walk speed now. So, yeah, until the uh, next episode, I will see you guys later. And keep making games, have fun, and goodbye.